I'm assuming that you remember uh, Seltzer Festival last year and the video that I made about Seltzer Festival last year. Um, there weren't a lot of local seltzers. <laughs> Folding Warehouse has promised that this year is different. That it is a little more uh, local focused, uh, bigger, better. Um, that's kind of why we're here. Questions that need answered uh, in order to, I guess, call this a success. Um, is it bigger? Uh, yeah, it's bigger. The second question, is it better? Um, again, I go yes, it's better than it was last year. The big question though, that um, we're, we'll figure out, uh, is it local? Because since the Seltzer Fest has to have local seltzers uh, represented. I was a little hard on the Foley Warehouse last year. It's a little bit hard because it was Cincy Seltzer Fest and there was nothing made in Cincinnati except for Truly. And Truly is represented. But, um, well, look, we've got March 1st with Astra. Karakin is here. Uh, they've got their sparkling spirits and their bourbon wheel. Great Lakes, I'll count you because you're in Ohio. Sam Adams is here with Truly, obviously. Uh, it's a sponsor of the event. You can't, you can't miss it with this big giant can in the middle of the room. But they've also got their bevy long drink and uh, twisted tea, which we could debate if twisted tea is a seltzer. Uh, but it's here and it's local. My understanding of what makes something a seltzer versus what makes something a canned cocktail or a culinary inspired fizzy drink or whatever other names people have come up for these things. Um, there's a, there's a wide range there. We should ask an expert. You're an expert on seltzer, right? I am, yes, I know everything there is to know about seltzer. Perfect. Um, what makes a seltzer? What makes a canned cocktail? What makes a fizzy fruit culinary inspired can of something? What makes an RG Bev? What makes, what is the difference between all this stuff? <laughs> there is no difference. <laughs> it's all deliciousness in a can. Are they and all? Are, they all have bubbles in common, right? Right. That's the that's the baseline. Okay. But I think when you base your cock your your when you're going with a cocktail, you have to name it after a cocktail and model it after model it after a cocktail. Well, I mean, what do we have here tonight, though? So we got a bunch. seltzers, we got lemonades, we got teas. Yeah. We got. I think it all fits under the same umbrella. Alternative uh, beverages. The lines are blurred. Uh, very blurry. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the same way in every category, though. No. I, well, I think so, but some brands, and I won't name names like Rheingeist, but they make a big, they make a big point of saying this is not a seltzer. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something different. This is something bigger than a seltzer, more elevated. Somebody else did that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I won't name any names, but it was Karakin. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then they made seltzers, and now they make Bourbon Wheel, which is all they should ever make. That stuff is delicious. <laughs> ever. <laughs> so good. So, uh, expert didn't help. Well, no, we, we still don't know anything. We still don't know the difference. Rheingeist here with their whole line of RG Bevs. Third Eye is here. Mad Tree is here with their uh, Sway. Sonder is here with their seltzers. Uh, Urban is here with their seltzers. Rebel Metal here, seltzers. Uh, 
local seltzer is extremely well represented here. Not that there aren't other brands here. Uh, you still have stuff like Mike's, and you've got White Claw, and you've got Press, and something called Sesh. Um, I have no idea what that is. But uh, Smirnoff, Smirnoff is here. So there are things that are definitely not local also, but it's okay. Okay.